Hey everyone, here are 10 things to know about Adobe Fresco, the new drawing and painting app from Adobe. The first thing you should know is this app is based on a freemium model, which means this app is free to use, but certain features are locked away. If you want to have access to all the features, you will need to pay for the subscription model, which is currently at the time of this video, US $10 per month. Now, if you happen to have the Photoshop plan or the Creative Cloud plan, you can sign with your Adobe ID to unlock all the features. But if you have the photography plan, unfortunately, that plan doesn't give you um, all the features for this app. So right now, I think if you really do want to use this with all the features unlocked, it's best to get the Photoshop plan because it doesn't make sense to just buy the subscription plan alone for Adobe Fresco when you can get the plan with Photoshop and Adobe Fresco. All right, let's see what are the features that are locked away with the freemium model. With the freemium model, certain brushes are locked away. They are identified by the star icon. And when you click on the locked brush, Basically, when you click on any of the premium features, this screen will pop up asking you to subscribe or upgrade to their plan. This is in Singapore currency, by the way. Adobe Fresco can import Photoshop brushes, but that functionality is locked away. Let's look at file export. There are two options here, publish and export, and quick export. File export is limited to PNG and JPEG. PSD and PDF are locked away. So with this option, you cannot export to PSD and PDF, but somehow for the quick export option, this actually allows you to save as a PSD. And this is a full resolution PSD with no limitation. Maybe the Adobe programmers forgot to lock that feature away because when you take a look at the quick export settings here, it only allows you to choose between PNG and JPEG. But when I click the quick export earlier, it allowed me to export as PSD. So I'm going to leave this blank. If I choose one of these, I will not be able to export as PSD anymore. The second thing to know is Adobe Fresco is supported on this iPad models. We have iPad Pro, all the models, iPad Air 3, iPad 5, 6, and 7 iPad mini 5 and you must be running at least iOS 12.4 or iPad OS. So your iPad must be one of these models or newer. Now iPad 5, it doesn't support Apple Pencil and with Adobe Fresco, I do recommend you use Apple Pencil because it has palm rejection and pressure sensitivity. Third thing to know is all the files that you create, they will be synced to Adobe Cloud Online. If you happen to be using Adobe Draw and Adobe Sketch, those files will also be available inside Adobe Fresco. If you go to Adobe Cloud by typing the URL adobe.com, you will not be able to find your files there because this cloud is the document cloud, it's different from Creative Cloud. To see any of the files that you create using mobile apps, you will have to use Creative Cloud. So here inside Creative Cloud under Cloud Documents, this is where you will have access to all the files created from those mobile apps. I have two files here and two folders. Now, all these files and folders, they will take up space from your plan. So if you are using the free plan from Adobe, that's going to be two gigs. And this file here, see 10 photos. This is a file with just 10 photographs duplicated on 10 separate layers and it takes up 80 megabytes. So you can expect to run out of space from your free storage space very quickly. The fourth thing to know is when you are drawing, Adobe Fresco will automatically save a timeless video of your drawing process. But at the time of this video, there is no way to change the quality of that video. So you cannot change the frame rate. You cannot change the size of the video, which is limited to 1080p. And you cannot change the quality, the compression of that video. To export a time-lapse video, you just have to click the share button, click publish and export, choose time-lapse export. Now, if you are watching this time-lapse video on your computer, you are going to see very severe compression. Here on this iPad, it still looks all right. And the frame rate is 8.5 frames per second. And there's no way to change that. 
at the time of this video. The fifth thing to know is when you export the Adobe Fresco file as a Photoshop file, you can actually open that with Affinity Photo. This is version 1.7.3 on the iPad. You can do that on Mac OS as well as on Windows uh, using the same version of Affinity Photo. I'm not sure what version of Photoshop file this is, so I cannot confirm whether or not the older versions of Photoshop can open the PSD that's exported by Adobe Fresco. For point six, uh, let me just talk about the main selling point, the highlight of Adobe Fresco, and that's the ability to use the live brushes. What live brushes are, are the oil and watercolor brushes that try to mimic how oil and watercolor actually works, how they actually behave in real life. And here it works quite well. So I have applied some watercolor onto the canvas and you can see the ink, sorry, the watercolor spread out very gradually as if it's real water. Let me pick another color to add some shadow. So now I can blend the watercolor to create some soft shadows very easily. And once I dab the paint onto the surface, the colors will start to spread and blend very softly, very nicely. You can also pick a brush that is white and sort of lift up the paint to create highlights. I've just picked a really small round brush with red paint. So notice how when I add the paint onto the canvas, the color spreads out. And now I'm testing the oil brushes. For oil brushes, they have tilt. So I can actually use the side of the Apple Pencil to paint over large areas. And the responsiveness of all this app, it's, well, it's very responsive. The good thing about oil and watercolor brushes is, well, they aren't locked away in the free model, so you can still use them. So let me pick some white paint. So this is how blending will work. When you are painting over existing paint, it would actually react with the paint beneath. So this is quite amazing. You can also choose how much paint is on your brush. So right now I have a lot of white paint. All this blending and color mixing, it's very responsive. It happens really fast. But of course, this is the iPad Pro. I'm not sure what the performance is like on maybe the iPad 6 and 7, which is still using the older processor. But for the iPad Pro, this is very responsive. The next thing I want to talk about is finger gestures. This app, it does support finger gestures, but it's quite limited. So for example, we have double tap to undo. You can find all the gestures under the settings, app settings view gestures. This is the list of default gestures available and there is no way to customize them. The next point is there is only sRGB color mode. You cannot choose other color modes like CMYK. Even when you click print, even when you choose the A4 size canvas, there is no way to choose CMYK. When you export the file later on and view it on the computer, it will show you sRGB. You can change the dimensions, you can change the print resolution, but um, not the color mode. When it comes to importing photos, unfortunately, it can only import a low res version of the photo, even if your original is high resolution. So here I have this photo, which is actually a 16 megapixel photo. And this is how pixelated it is is um, so if you are someone who do speed painting who does photo collages who need to use high resolution photos in your artworks well this is a deal breaker obviously 
it's like this for the freemium and the subscription plan so maybe Adobe will change that in the future but this is how it is right now the last thing I want to talk about is the Adobe ecosystem or the subscription plan. So when you stop paying for the subscription plan, you will lose access to all the premium features, all the unlock features. You will still be able to open the files, but um, certain functionality that makes life easier will be lost, like the ability to export files into PSD. So this file format here, PSDC, this is created by Adobe Fresco. I'm not sure if this is actually a Photoshop file or a variant of a Photoshop file. Anyway, these are my files on the Creative Cloud. If I try to do a quick export, it actually allows me to export as a JPEG. There is no way to export as a PSD and for some reason there is no way for me to change the file format in the settings because there is no functionality to do that. So to export as PSD, I will have to do so inside Adobe Fresco and if I don't have the subscription model, I won't be able to do that. I'm pretty sure the PSD export that I showed you earlier, that's a feature that is meant to be locked away. Um, yeah, so that's just how the way it is with such subscription plans. Oh, the last thing I want to tell you is um, for some reason, Adobe Fresco on my iPad, it takes up a lot of space. The app itself, it takes up slightly over 500 megabytes, but the documents and data are 5.9 gigabytes. And you saw earlier, I only have two files there. So I'm not sure how those two files are contributing to the 5.9 gigs of storage. There's no doubt that Adobe Fresco is a very capable drawing and painting app, but it runs on a subscription model. So personally for me, I'm not sure if it's worth the money to get the app for the live brushes, the live watercolor and oil brushes as good as they are. I mean, it's an extra US $10 per month. If you happen to be using the Photoshop or Creative Cloud plan, that's great because Adobe Fresco will be free for you. But if you're not, is it worth subscribing to a $10 per month plan just to use those brushes? I mean, there are other capable drawing apps out there. And I cannot end this video without talking about Procreate, which is just $10 for a lifetime use with no limitations. I would love to hear from you what you think about Adobe Fresco. Let me know in the comment section below. Personally for me, I will be sticking with Procreate. It's a no-brainer.